Music is art, and there are million and one ways that artists have chosen to express their art during a pandemic. In this time, artists have found new ways to speak up for a cause, engage with their fans, and create new streams of income during a pandemic. Johnny Drill, born in Benin City, has quickly become one of Nigeria's most sought-after artists, churning out singles and albums that people quickly engage with, both locally and internationally. Currently signed to Maven Records, Johnny Drill isn't slowing down. Up next on Robin Minds, Ibuka Obi Uchendu charts with Johnny Drill. Johnny Drill is here, one of my favorite artists around. How are you doing, man? Good, good, good. Thank you for having have me. Have I ever asked Happy you where the name is from? I don't think you have. Um, a lot of people have asked, though. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I... I'd really so badly want to have like a story behind it. Like a sweet story. It's just no story. I just I just picked it up. It sounded like, you know, an artist's name and Is your name John? My name is John, by the way. A okay. drill. <laughs> nothing, nothing. <laughs> You're a Bini boy, I believe. Of course, I'm from Bini City. Born bred? Yes, lived most of my life until, until I moved to Lagos three years ago. So there's, there's a belief that certain parts of the country are known to churn out, you know, this sort of talent. Yeah. You know, Lagos, to an extent, mm. Port Harcourt, parts of the East. Um, how much is Benin influence all of this? Because um, yeah, I see so there's you now and there's you, yeah, you up around and now there's, 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 um, there's Rema. Exactly. A lot of people know, are starting Cynthia to Morgan, watch that. Cynthia Morgan. Um, scales. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I believe that a lot of great, great talent have come from... Um, being in, God rest his soul, Majak Fashek, uh, you know, Sonia Kosu and the rest of them, Victor Waifu, you know, the list is endless. So great talent. I mean, from all over the country, but, but, but it'll stay, you know, we've got our own fair share of um, talented people. Myself, yeah. Rema, you know, doing great stuff. There's a culture of music sort of. Yes, that, there is. Up until helps. before I moved, um, moved to Lagos, there was, because I had big songs already. Like I had Wait For Me. It was already playing yeah. in Lagos a lot. But yeah, I was still in Benin. In fact, I had not even visited Lagos like you know, that, that much. Um, it's amazing because I was able to push music from Benin City and same with a lot of artists from, from around the town. And not just being in Delta State, you know, it's just our neighbors. Um, great talent, great, great musicians yeah. all around. I mean, I was born there as well. So oh, yeah, for real? I just, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's good to know that. That's my time. <laughs> I should have added you to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I don't sing. I have no talent with music. But as that, because there's a belief that, um, the Lagos is sort of a little too dominant in the yeah. music scene. There's people who believe with every countdown you see, it's sort of Lagos mm. centric. You know, do you agree that Lagos is a little too powerful? I've heard arguments about, oh, this guy is popping in Port Harcourt, but yeah. I know you guys have not heard of him. This guy is popping in Enugu, in Kaduna. Um, is that is that a good thing for the industry where it seems like one city is a little too dominant? Um, so it's it's a tricky question. I, I I wouldn't say if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Um, but the, the truth is that it's our reality right now, because um, Lagos has become so so. It's become that it's become that center where you know you have to get your music to blow there, and then you get to the rest of the country get to hear your music. Um, and even if you take it to the U.S., for example, L.A. is kind of like that. Even even though the music is there, is a lot more dynamic because you have music in Texas. You know, you have Nashville, the country music, and the There's rest Atlanta of them. Atlanta, so exactly. Well. But the big record labels and the rest of them, you mostly find them in LA and the big studios and all that. Um, so, so for for Nigeria, Lagos has become that, and I won't say it's such a great thing because you know because Nigeria is so big, it's so vast, different cultures, and it's it it'll be great to see you know see someone from the north who's doing so well in the north still be able to play, get your music played in Lagos. You could be could be in the east to get your music to be yeah. played in Lagos and still. You know, have that impact. Like, you don't necessarily have to have to move to Lagos, but the reality is that that's what it is. Yeah. Um, you see, I had to move to La to Lagos from Benin City. Yeah. I j I just had to at that point. You know, it was hard traveling back and forth for interviews. A lot of the big um, radio, TV stations, media houses, you find them in Lagos. Yeah. So you literally have to be here to. Is streaming going to change that? You think? Because people push their music now. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think that. Or well, Lagos will still be a factor. I, for a while, I, from the way I say it, it's still going to be like that for a while. Um, there was a, a point that, you know, Port Harcourt, Duncan Mighty, I think Timaya as well, yeah. you know, they were, they, were, they were making music from Port Harcourt, and it looked like Port Harcourt was beginning to become like a Lagos, 
But after a while, you know, all that just and it was, still went back to the same, same yeah. old Lagos. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping that with time that, you know, different parts of Nigeria um, they yes. begin to develop, develop structures that will be able to support their artists and, you know, they don't necessarily have to move to Lagos to, yeah. to blow up. Looking forward to that. But with, with the kind of music you do, I know you get this a lot, you know. Do, do, you, do, you, do you feel the need to sort of appeal to the notion that you are not Nigerian enough with your music, you know? The word I hate, Afrobeats, yeah. is <laughs> the trend, you know. You do your thing. Yeah. I'm not sure what genre you call your music, but it doesn't seem to be bang bang dim dim that a lot of people like to like to be a part of. Do you ever feel the need uh, to fall into the pressure? Um, I maybe once in a while, uh, um, and also because you know, can't deny the fact that Afrobeat is a big sound from Africa. It's it, it's a big sound from Nigeria. It's that big sound. It's you know what everyone is listening to to most people, especially from outside of Africa, um, and of course you know. Also because streaming has become so popular recently, especially in Nigeria, and you know, and the you know playlisting and all that, and you have to make songs that fit in the certain playlists, you know, the Afrobeats playlist, you can have a folk song, an Afrobeats play playlist and all that. Um, maybe once in a while, but I, I've, I've come to believe that, you know, for, for an industry like the one we have here to grow and even to mature and to become better and bigger, it has to be dynamic. You have to have, you know, different sounds, different, yeah. you know, different kinds of music. It's great that Afrobeat is doing so well right now, but we can't, we can't at the same time suppress all the sounds that we have. Um, it's beautiful, it's great when an industry can grow and be dynamic, and you know, when we, could cater, we can cater for people that you know, are not doing Afrobeat. Is there a difference from when you started and now with acceptance? Of course there is. When I started, there was always that, um, you know, it's not gonna do well, even from my own friends in Benin. I, I was hearing that a lot from them. You know, you have to do this, this is what people are listening to, that kind of vibe, you know the Afrobeats, the dance, the club. Even when I was meeting like record labels and you know people that wanted to invest in my music, that after they tell you, hey, I love your music, I love your sound, it's great, great. The next conversation is, uh, can you do something like yeah. this, you know, to pop in the club and all that. Um, but now it's a little different. Now acceptance is great. Um, people have come to accept my music, <coughs> and I, it just, especially when I'm having live shows, it just shows me more that you know these people yeah. actually appreciate all the sounds that are not Afrobeats. So what did you do? What was it that Mavens saw? Did they? Did you have that conversation with, with the Mavens where? Because there was a quote unquote controversial statement that I think John Jazzy made in the past yeah. about signing on rappers. Yes. And uh, he went, oh, so you can't have a, ever have a rapper on your in your on your label. And Mavens more hits. They seem to have a style. Mm. Did that conversation ever come up with you with changing um, or tweaking things? Yeah, so so the first time I met Jazzy, doing Jazzy, the first time he told me he wanted me to join Maven Records, the, one of the first things he told me was, I think he already knew that if he, people were already like, hey, Johnny Drill, protect his sound, that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, the first things, he, one of the first things he told me was that, you know, I'm not going to change your sound. I'm interested in changing your sound. I'm trying to use the, this Maven machine that I've used to promote this pop act, yeah. this Afrobeats act, to, to try and promote you as well. He had his concerns, and he wasn't shy, shy about saying them, that, you know. Um, but I'm just, now I'm looking down the line, I'm like, he did really well, yeah. you know, to be able to push a Johnny Drill with a structure that I wasn't used to pushing my kind of music. Yeah. Um, but there's never been that com conversation of, yo, you, you need to start switching up your sound, you need to start changing. But what I do know is that in time to come, there's going to be a lot of fusion yeah. because it's beauty of, you know, music. And the label is diverse. There's a lot exactly. Of you know, there. right now, we're even expanding. Now it's Maven Global. The, the sound is international. We've got Rema, we've got Crayon, we've got, you know, Ladipo's a rapper. Yeah. You did something with Ladipo's. Yes, yes, I something. did. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We had that. And there's a series I call Johnny's Music Mondays so yeah. for every Monday, every fortnight. Um, so I had Ladipo come on. So you see, it's, it's, it's a dynamic level. It's different sounds, different people. Yeah. It's just great. What's, how, how's this, I mean, the new world order? <laughs> it's, it's, such a, it's such a weird time. A lot of us are trying to understand how we can move forward and most importantly make a living still yeah. in times like this. Yeah. What's going on with the Johnny Drew brand with regards to, okay, you can't perform yeah. the way you love to. I think the it's the whole music to. industry yeah. right now. What's happening? Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting times we're in. Um, coronavirus shut down the world. Shut us down, everybody. It seemed uh, like it was going to be temporary initially, exactly, but it's a little like, too long I was now. like, yo. I mean, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not even looking like it's slowing down, and we don't know how long this is going to continue for. Um, I was just reading recently that, you know, the global music industry lost about $10 billion this year, and it's, the whole industry is worth about $50 billion. Um, it just makes me see that, you know, we need to start looking at more ways to, you know, generate income. To, to be able to sustain ourselves and, and whatnot, because no live shows are happening right now. 
and most artists are depending on stream. And the, the truth is that in Nigeria, compared to the rest of the world, our stream, streaming numbers are pretty low. Yeah. Um, so now everyone's trying to figure out ways, you know, to be able to. And, and I think right now, one of the ways people people are trying to get get by is to partner with brands, because most artists have clout. They've got following that you know a lot of brands who are looking to tap into, um, you know. Adver advertisement and you know get the brands out there they're partnering with a lot of artists these days yeah. um so i guess everyone's just trying to figure out things for themselves yeah are these online things working because i've seen a few online concerts yeah. i've seen a few instagram live yeah the versus seems to be the thing yeah. now for for this um how do you generate income from stuff like that well, that, that that's what i was saying like yeah. you have to partner with a brand there has to be a brand partnership no, but People are coming on your Instagram live. They're not like. They're not going to pay you. They're not going to pay you. You're not getting money for, from that. Yeah. So, but is that sustainable? You think? You? Um, right now, it looks like it's one of the few ways. Um, but moving forward, I don't know. We'll probably have to figure out more ways globally. I, I it's not just in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, figure out ways to be able to get income aside aside some streaming. Yeah. Who are some people you would think are in your headspace when it comes to your genre of music yeah. in this country? Um. All right, so, so there's no somebody come to mind. Are there yeah, people who you so would... of course? So so coming to that, like so there's this there's this tag they usually tag every everybody that's not doing <laughs> that's not doing Afrobeat. Everyone is whether it's time, soul so. or whether jazz or this. <laughs> yeah, all alternative. It's crazy. You know, there was a time in Nigeria where you know R and B was the pop music was yeah. the big sound, and everything else was alternative. Was you know, but now it's it's you know Afrobeat is the sound right now. So I, I I try to stay away from alternative, but if I if I if I want to look at people that do different music that's not Afrobeat, you know, there's Nonso Amadi, there's Brimo, there's my friend Rick Asani, T Jan, um, you know, um, there is um, Chike as well, you know, great amazing arts, and I really do appreciate them because you know, it just shows us that industry is is, is yeah. dynamic. There's yeah. a lot of amazing artists. Who would you do a versus with? A versus, <laughs> ah, hmm. um, whoa, probably a Rick Asani. And win, Rikasani. I will win, of course. <laughs> if he's watching right now. So all those names you mentioned, you think you would go head to head and, and uh, crush it? I don't like. I don't like. You know. To but it, it's it's what the world it's has what become. It is now. Right the, now the, everybody is doing a versus. You know. I mean, it would be nice to see you and a Chike or you and a Rikasani yeah, or true. you and. So Rikasani, Chike, any of these guys. And you, you feel know. like you go toe to toe with that? I mean, it's. Because I'm trying to set it up yeah, just mentally now. It's the, I get, the point is not about winning or losing. It's just about, you know. Yeah, we'll have fun, but we also like to it's, vote. It's you people that want that. You guys want that. But we just want to, you know, play music and sing for you yeah. guys. You, you, you mentioned Bremo there, and he's, he's yeah. gone through quite a bit of drama recently, yeah. you know, especially with the times, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a conversation about rape earlier. Yes. Um, you're wearing black like the other people. You're the one who seemed not to get the memo. Mm -hmm. um, of course, he's denied a lot of the allegations and all of that. But you stay away a lot from drama. And there's yeah. people who believe that being in the limelight, you need some of that sometimes because yeah. it helps the brand when there's talkability about you. Controversy, yeah. Do you not feel the need sometimes to... Just throw things out there for people to, because it helps, whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. Um, so, so uh, as much as I don't like controversy, uh, we're at Maven Records, we don't like controversy. I don't even notice. <laughs> we, just, we just stay away from all that stuff. Um, and of course, I know a lot of people like, try to write on controversy to sell music yeah. or to sell, sell their names and all that. Uh, for me, um, I mean, I just want the music to speak, to, to, to be able to speak for itself. I don't want any, any I don't want, I don't want, the news around Johnny Drill to be bigger than you know the music. I want you to mention Johnny Drill, and the first thing that comes to mind is great music. And now, hey, he did this, or he did that, or he said this, or he said that. Um, so for me, it's just the music. But there's nothing. I don't have anything against people, you know, especially if it's not if it's not controversy that's damaging or, you know, um, of course, why not? Yeah. So what sort of controversy would you say is safe? Controversy that's safe. Um, I don't know. Well, for me, it'll probably be, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say it, but, you know, if it happens, Let's see how we'll feed that. You know, no, I'm not going to say Because <laughs> the funny thing is there are people who like to stay mysterious, and there's some controversy in that mystery. I'm thinking yeah. of a Beyonce now who there's always, okay, what is she doing now? How yes. is she going about that? I mean, Whiskey, to our next and also does that, yeah, where you almost kind of don't yes. know what's happening. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for Whiskey, your album. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's been two years now. I mean, there's also some something in that. Is that sort of the line you'd rather to where yeah, 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 people I'd don't know enough, but anticipate a lot? Yeah, I think so. I probably that, That's probably my thing. I'm, I'm very introverted. Um, I, I don't like to, you know, um, get involved in stuff that, you know, would make me start to think and overthink and, you know, do all that stuff. I just want to 
make music and make the world happy. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my thing. How do you think the music industry is going to recover from this, from this time? Um, um, is it going to be a case of until this is done, nothing viable can really happen? Because people are holding back their albums. People are not trying yes. to release too much <laughs> stuff because it's just going to be a waste of time. You know, you just get, like you said, streaming here isn't even that yes. great, you know. So how long do you think the music industry can hold out for? Um, I think, you know, just like, you know, we, we, we had our lockdown, everywhere was totally locked down, and then they started to ease the lockdown, not because the cases were reducing or, or anything. Trying to learn to leave with it. Exactly, you know. I think at, at some point, we, it's probably going to become a bit like that. Yeah. Um, people will just try to now start to find ways to safely do certain things, yeah. maybe sa safely have concerts, limit the numbers, and all that stuff. But I think coronavirus, is, it's not looking, hopefully by God's grace, you know, things will begin to get better. But it's not looking like that right now. The, the numbers are still increasing. I think last time yeah. I checked, we were at like 12,000, over, th over, over 12,000 cases in Nigeria alone. Um, so I don't, I don't think that, I think people are just going to find ways, begin to figure out ways yeah. to be able to, to be exist able to with it. Exactly. What's next for you, man? What's happening? Any plans still for 2020? I know it's a very, <laughs> it was supposed to be the year yes, for was, a lot of people. Was, it's, but it's is crazy. it still the year for Johnny Because I was having plan? such a great year yeah. when the year started. January and February were pretty good. Exactly. You know, <laughs> February was the month of love. You know, Johnny Drew was everywhere doing shows and, and then you boom. know, preaching love and all that <laughs> stuff. And then coronavirus, March, it's hit Nigeria hard. Um, so for me, but I'm not letting it slow me down. I'm still working on a lot of music. I just released a new song. It's called um, Something Better. Um, it's a different kind of Johnny Drill, yeah. not your usual typical Johnny Drill, you know. What's unusual um, about it? What's unusual is, you know, Johnny Drill is usually, hey, you're the girl of my dreams, you know, I want, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, beautiful, you know, just painting love from the beautiful side. But this time I was, I tried to, you know, you know, sing about the other side. So you probably need to go and check that out. Um, anyways, I, I'm doing a lot of great stuff. I'm working on new music as well, um, a lot of collaborations as well. Yeah. Um, still trying to figure out ways. And of course, I've got Johnny's Music Mondays, which yes, is, uh, which is um, pretty impressive. Happens every fortnight, every Monday. Um, um, yes, watch out for that. Yeah. What inspired that? Well, I, I, I've actually been doing that for like four years yeah, now. No. I was still in Benin at the time. I just I was trying to figure out ways to be able to constantly engage with my fans and, you know, Still, when I'm not releasing music, I'm still keeping them, yeah. you know, still giving them music, still giving them. So every, every, every Monday, it used to be every Monday, I would just have, sit on my keyboard, play the keyboard, yeah. sing like a song that people are familiar with or an original song, reimagine it, and, you know, just to have like a different vibe. And yeah. people loved it, so I started to do it more often. It's but been every, like four every years other now. Monday now. Exactly. Um, would you ever do anything in entertainment outside of music? Um, I, 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 I probably will. Acting? Do, I Comedy. love that. I, I, I have a thing for acting. I have, not even I have a thing for movies. I'm a movie freak. I've, lead, I've probably seen all the great movies that have come out bet between 1990 and now. Um, even like the production. So every time I watch a movie, I'm always going to Wikipedia to check what happened, what happened with this movie, how's the reception, how do they produce it and all that. So I'll probably get into movies at some point. Okay. Even if not acting, maybe producing movies so and all be, that stuff. We should, we should be looking out Def for that. And I'll get in the restaurant business as well. I'm a pretty good chef. So. Oh. I didn't see that. I like to blow my trumpet. Chef Drill. Chef Drill. Or Chef Johnny. I've never, I've, never, I've never thought of that. <laughs> That'd be an interesting one. You don't, you don't get to talk about your personal life a lot, but a lot of people get very interested in stuff like mm. that. So let's just be clear yeah. with, with that. Are you in a relationship now? Um, yes. With? My music. I knew you were going to say that, and I hate <laughs> that so much. Don't be that cliche guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in relationships. OK. Yes. With? With my music and some other people. So there's multiple partners? Not multiple partners. It's just, you said you know. some other people. So I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> so if you think you are the girlfriend, there's other people <laughs> besides you. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. It's what I just said. Well, thank you very much for being here thank today. So all the best. Looking me. forward to all the great things that will still come in 2020. Absolutely. I'm sure absolutely. it's going to be a good year. I will give you a handshake, but I can't, unfortunately. And yes, Rikasani Chike. We're waiting for the verses. He just challenged you guys. Thanks for being here. I'll see you guys in a moment.